Today I'm finishing up all of the miscellaneous details on the Southern 1980 Toyota long bed frame. So I can start swapping the engine, cab, and bed over from the Ohio truck. Manual transmission mount, done. Bump stops for the mini C notch, done. Emergency brake cables, done. Rear brake line, done. Gas tank, done. New rear brake line to replace this 43 year old rubber one. And done. So even though I am lowering this truck, it is still going to be a long bed, and that's good for carrying loads. So I don't have to use my lifted 1985 4x4 anymore to carry three-wheelers and four-wheelers and loads of wood and engines and transmissions. This is going to be a lot easier to load things in and out of. So to accommodate for the occasional extra weight I'll be carrying in the back, I got these Monroe Air Shocks. I did some research and the overall reviews for these were pretty good for the price. I'll put a link for these Monroe Air Shocks in the description. Now to replace this very much destroyed center carrier bearing on the two-piece drive shaft. I actually have a full how-to video of this job from back in the early days of the channel when I replaced the center carrier bearing on my 1985 extra cab. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you're interested. Let's get this transmission ready for a clutch. Yeah, this throw up bearing was definitely done. So here is the clutch I'll be using on this truck. And uh, no, it's not actually a new clutch. Uh, I've spent a lot of money on this truck and got Christmas around the corner and phones are getting kind of tight. So uh, this is a gently used OEM clutch that I've had sitting around. And I figure this will be a good truck because it's not like I'm gonna be driving this thing hard or making a lot of power with it. Plus funds are a little bit tight right now because I may have bought a laser cleaner from China last week. But more on that when it arrives in a couple months. However, it does have a new pilot bearing and uh, this is slightly used, but also in good shape. So it'll be perfect for this truck. And on the top row here is the original flywheel clutch and pressure plate from the 20R that was in the Southern truck. And down here is the 22R setup that I have. I measured everything's the same. The only real difference is in the clutch disc in the center here. Uh, this one has two springs. Next, I cleaned up all the old grease from the splines. Pressed on the new throwout bearing. Put some fresh grease on the splines. And installed the new throwout bearing. Done. Now I'm installing a ratchet strap on the torsion bars to hold up the front of the transmission until I get the engine installed. And now for the drive shaft. 
Start with some fresh grease on the yolk and splines. Hand tighten the center carrier bearing bolts for now. And install the drive shaft bolts. Done. Now is a great time to replace these 43 year old rubber fuel lines. Done. So before I go any farther on this project, I'm going to take a few minutes to use a spray gun and some fluid film and spray inside every single access hole throughout the entire frame to make sure the inside is good and coated and safe from any future rust. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you've probably seen me use fluid film plenty of times. I've been using it on all my old Toyotas because it definitely works. No, fluid film didn't sponsor this video. I bought all this product because it's well worth the money. Fluid film will actually creep farther over time into the nooks and crannies of the frame. And if there's anything a Toyota frame needs, it's extra protection from rust and corrosion on the inside of the frame. I already painted the outside of the frame in a previous video, and as my testing showed, the coating is extremely tough and resists chipping. So I'm not even going to bother coating the outside of the frame because the fluid film will make it feel greasy and I'm still probably going to fine tune the ride height with some small blocks in the rear and adjusting the torsion bars up front. Even though this truck will never see road salt as long as it's in my hands, I couldn't pass up this easy opportunity to protect the inside of the frame while there was no body installed. So I just came to realize I got a little ahead of myself. In the last episode, uh, I talked about taking this motor and putting it onto the frame, bolt it up to the transmission, and have a fully built drivetrain and chassis, and just have to throw the body and the bed on and get it running. Simple, right? Well, not exactly. The only problem with that idea is that after I got that 20-yard motor in the other frame, I'd only be able to lift this cab up about 18 inches from where it is right now using that hoist. And that's just not going to be enough room to clear the top of that motor. Plus, I found some areas inside this cab that are going to need some attention, such as, if you look right there, that is some uh, rusty pinholes there under the battery tray. Plus, I still need to finish the back side of that bottom wall here on the back of the cab and get the cab tipped up and make sure all the bottom side of the floors are sealed up and rust free as well. Not to mention, I don't know if you can see that thermometer up there, but it's freezing in here. We're now into December and uh, winter is here. So I'd really like to free up this parking spot for my daily driver, Honda Fit. So my new plan is to pull off the bed, put it onto the new frame. I can do that in a day easily. Then pull off the cab and just set it aside so I can do all the work I need to do before I install it onto the new frame. Then I'll just be left with a rusty frame on four wheels so that I can push outside into the yard and save because I'm actually going to reuse this to help me on my next project. Because I'm going to need somewhere to set this 1985 Forerunner body and be able to move it around while I restore the frame for it. And once I get the old bed on and then I get the cab on, then I can finally drop in the 20 yard engine and put in the radiator and hook up the steering and get everything else to get this truck started and finally moving. And of course, it's going to be sitting lower, so it'll be looking good. Then I'll probably go to the wall of wheels and pick out some nice new shoes for it. But right now, I'm just trying to get it together and get it stored away in the barn for winter so I can get the 1985 Forerunner in here and start working on putting a new engine and possibly transmission into that. So this is the first time I've really done a frame off restoration by myself in a residential garage. So I'm kind of winging it and figuring it out as I go. And I hope you guys are all enjoying this video series, and uh, there's going to be a lot more to come. Thanks for watching.